Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Before you, you see a whole cacophony of things, and that's because it's been reasonably eventful this week with, uh, with regards to the robot. I actually uh, tried to program it, uh, getting its serial port working. So that's basically going from the Raspberry Pi GPIO to the Sabertooth controllers onboard serial and I couldn't get it working and it was a whole faff. I even soldered some wires onto here, had the oscilloscope going, couldn't get serial data coming out of that GPIO. Turns out apparently according to Andy Beer that you have to turn off the Bluetooth stack so promptly I gave up with that and I'm waiting on a USB to serial adapter for this because it was becoming far too cumbersome and of course I'd end up with issues probably with multiplexing these pins if I wanted to use other things. So you can see there's a bit of a mess here and that's because um, I mentioned to Andy that I would uh, need some way of uh, displaying what's going on the unit because developing on it was quite cumbersome because I was SSHing to this unit from my PC but you can see there's a keyboard and mouse now that's because Andy sent me this thing he invented and it is indeed a screen and you can see that's the Raspberry Pi and if I move the mouse around you could see the mouse is moving though it's a weird angle to me yep there you go you can see that's working and that's brilliant it's basically looks like a tablet but it's not so what I thought would be fun is let's have a look at what Andy's actually done here uh, this week um, while we're waiting for the other robot parts to continue and unfortunately it does feel very much like the waiting game really you know, when you start to build these things so unless you assemble absolutely everything you're likely to need you're going to hit roll blocks like this um, i'm going to put our laser uh, lidar thing away just push all that you can see i'm being very cautious with how we're treating all this stuff it's hardy it's fine don't worry about it now you did notice this was plugged into the raspberry pi via hdmi which is the best way so this is going to live on there but what's really fantastic, it's actually assembled using a project box. So if I pull this out, I mean, well, instrumentation box rather than just a plain project box. And those are designed so that you pull these little kickstands out and you would put them on your desk like that and there'd be knobs on there, which is kind of cool. So what Andy's done, of course, is mount it, <laughs> this, this on there. And looking at it, it looks like just a generic tablet. This once uh, had a previous life, was just a normal generic tablet and it's hot glued onto there so there's all manner of interesting gubbins in here because you can see you've got an HDMI input, a VGA input and I suspect a composite input so all of the inputs. So I'm going to unscrew these. Now these boxes are really good. I've got but continuously have a stash of them in the corner because they're so useful for projects and if you need anything that looks quite nice with a bit of instrumentation you want to put knobs on it, LEDs, things you can twiddle these are perfect for that and they're surprisingly cheap most project boxes are incredibly expensive but these are just coming from the far east for next to nothing so if you see them snap them up so the lid is off Ooh. So first things first, you can see behind there on that ribbon connector, you've got pretty much a standard LCD screen. And I have thrown away so many of those screens, um, it's unbelievable. And looking here, clearly Andy's come up with a way of using those screens so you could retask them. And I'm really kind of annoyed at myself because I, when I say thrown away a few, I'm talking about dozens, all different sizes. We could use them on projects like this. Anyhow, let's not dwell on the past. On the side here you can see this rather amazing bit of construction. In fact, I'm going to tighten it. Should it be that loose? Where it's basically a PCB which has the tack switches that are the controls for this board. So it's basically a TV uh, tuner board. And these are the buttons for the menu, up, down, input, select, all of those things. This is the exact generic uh, tuner board that you would find in a, any old cheap TV. So if you go and look around your house, perhaps you've got one. Um, in your bedroom or something, like a 15 inch or something telly. <laughs> well, that would be quite small these days. 20 inch, 16 by 9. Um, you'll you'll recognize the menu interface for this because it's it's a standard unit and it's basically designed to take those uh, variety of inputs and convert them purely for uh, a standard um, LDVS uh, LED TV and that's why you do have these buttons here and potentially I guess there are probably variants of this where you would have uh, a remote control interface 
This looks to me to be audio. So there is a possibility that it does decode the HDMI audio stream and then gives you that so that you could put it into something else, like an amplifier on board. And then there are some other mystery connectors. I am seeing though if there is any markings on here we could use in case we wanted to go ahead and buy one of these. I'm going to zoom right in. All I can see here is TTL, uh, <laughs> True Type Logic out. Then you have LVDS out. So that's quite interesting. I wonder why it has that uh, difference between the TTL and the LVDS, or are they really just the same signal? It just uh, happens to be the way the PCB is marked up. Um, and really, there's nothing else apart from DC in, as far as I can see here. So there's really not too much to go on. However, one of the other reasons I wanted to take this apart, of course, was to really have a good look at what you can do with regard to our project. Because I wanted to uh, have an interface on our robot a bit like... And what was that thing called in that spacey movie? Was it Tars or something like that? Do you remember the movie I'm talking about where you got love defeats the future? Oh, anyway, whatever it was. And they had robots in it that were walking around and they had these really cool little panels which just showed the status of what it was up to. Because this thing's going to be roaming around and doing its thing. We're going to want to know what is what are you up to at any one time, you know, of course you can access that over the internet but maybe you might be next to it and you just want to see see something and have a basic user interface so i was hoping and it looks like beyond all hope it can definitely happen that i can actually plug my raspberry pi in this enclosure okay clearly you might not need this this panel like that and you could bring that in board or mount it somewhere else um, i probably wouldn't do that to start with i'll probably just have a cable that comes out maybe squeeze that in. I actually do have uh, an HDMI cable that is, is basically a ribbon cable. We'll have to look for that. There's all sorts of uh, options you've got when it comes to that. Um, but it does look, because if you look on the side profile, the lid and the base go together to form the total enclosure. So you have a massive amount of room in there. So even if you have your Raspberry Pi mounted, say, on that side, so you've got some clearance, that gives you enough room to chuck on some of your hats if you want to wear when you want to wear a few hats on there. And again, we haven't tried any of these, so we've got no idea on the multiplexing issues. I probably so this is the analog to digital digital to analog board. Probably not want that as much as I'd want, say, the timekeeping board that this one is, and potentially a GPS board if I can get one. Um, this relay board would also be super useful. So I'm looking at quite a tall stack. So it does look like you will just to get away with, with putting them in. And if we do use something like this relay board and we want to get that going, I would probably use a drill on the end panels here and drill out some nice connections, maybe using M5s. Google M5 connectors, they're quite a nice little mini DIN type connector. Uh, and they do have a lot of over molded cable options. And that would be quite a sturdy thing because you'd want the uh, relay ability to be able to sw switch and actuate certain things. And though, yeah, it would also be good to have that on the digital. But I think one of the problems, I want to grief a little bit about the Raspberry Pi right now. One of the problems with the Raspberry Pi is the use of its GPIO. So it's really great that you get all of these accessories for it. But realistically, guys, if you are, well, guys and girls, if you are putting together a project like this, I would think try to find USB versions of everything. So if you get a USB D to A board, a USB relay board, a USB GP uh, S board, you can chuck that in there with a little hub PCB and just wire that all in that way. And it becomes a much easier way to connect it to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, it becomes more standard in Linux. All those device nodes for all of your various devices will appear slash dev slash whatever. It allows you to debug it on the PC by plugging this thing into the PC without the Pi at all. You can just load up Linux, program everything, get it all happy, um, and then try to port that back over to Raspberry Pi. So there's plenty of better options if you can do it. If you want to use the GPIO, yeah, go ahead. But honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sad Ken, Andy Beer again for this. This is absolutely phenomenal. We'll definitely be working out how we're going to mount some of this when, of course, my equipment comes and we start playing with the serial interface. Thanks for watching.
Just thought I'd add before I sign off, I haven't found a mounting combination here that actually works. How infuriating is that? You've got these holes. Um, <laughs> and as, as ever, nothing fits the thing that you're trying to actually fit. I'm going to grab a quick roll there. Let's see, is there any method to this madness? Well, they seem to be... Oh, is that 38 millimeters between zenders on that? Yeah, that's a weird one. I'm guessing if you flip the ruler over, that's some sort of weird inch and a half. Yeah, <laughs> it would be bloody imperial.